boys and girls, we're in Genesis 14 today, but before we get going, let's open in prayer. God and Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the possessor of heaven and earth. We thank you that you have delivered us from our enemies and from the evil one. We bless your name and worship you, O God Most High. In your Son's name, Amen. Now, we're going to be reading about Abraham and Melchizedek and a pretty epic battle, but before we do, Please go and grab your Bibles, because we'll start with that soon. But first of all, we are going to sing Psalm 110, verses 1 to 4. Now the words are going to appear on the screen, so sing along with us. The Lord said to my Lord, sit here at my right hand, until I make your foes a still on which your feet may stand. The Lord will make your reign extend from Zion's hill. With royal power you'll rule among those who oppose your will. When you display your power, your people flock to you. At dawn arrayed in holiness, your youth will come like dew. Unchangeably the Lord with solemn purpose swore, just like Melchizedek you are a priest forevermore. Hey everyone. Um, this morning we are going to read from Genesis chapter 14 and we're going to read verses 8 through 24. So if you want to get your Bibles out to read along, uh, but as always the words are going to come up on the screen. Then the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zoar, went out and they joined battle in the valley of Siddim with Kedolomar, king of Elam, title king of Goam, Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Ariok, king of Elisar, four kings against five. Now the valley of Siddim was full of bitumen pits, and as the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, some fell into them, and the rest fled to the hill country. So the enemy took all the possessions of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their provisions and went their way. They also took Lot, the son of Abram's brother, who was dwelling in Sodom and his possessions, and went their way. Then one who had escaped came and told Abram the Hebrew, who was living by the oaks of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshel and of Aner. These were allies of Abram. When Abram heard that his kinsmen had been taken captive, he led forth his trained men, born in his house, 318 of them, and went in pursuit as far as Dan. And he divided his forces against them by night, he and his servants, and defeated them and pursued them to Hobah, north of Damascus. Then he brought back all the possessions, and also brought back his kinsmen, lot with his possessions, and the women and the people. After his return from the defeat of Kedolomer, and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Sheva that is, the king's valley. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. And the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the persons, but take the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted my hand to the Lord, God most high, possessor of heaven and earth, that I would not take a thread or a sandal strap or anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich. And I will take nothing but what the young men have eaten, and the share of the men who went with me. Let Aner, Eshel, and Mamre take their share. So, turn with me to Genesis 14. There's a lot going on in Genesis 14, isn't there? Now, if you read through it, um, the first seven verses, which we didn't read earlier, are, are all about the battles that were raging on between neighboring nations. 
Um, maybe you've seen the Lord of the Rings movies or read the book even. It's really thick, but it's really good. And the first seven verses really just reminded me of some of the battles that go on in that in those movies and in that book and there are lots of people everywhere and it's very messy and chaotic and dangerous and probably very very scary it didn't sound like a nice place to be and then if you carry on reading and you get to verse 12 we read that the enemy takes Abraham's nephew Lot and all of Lot's stuff they kidnap him now, before we move on to the bits that we are actually going to focus on today, I just want you to look at those first few verses and see, is Abram mentioned anywhere? Did anything bad happen to Abram? So just have a careful look then, read through it slowly. And what you'll find is that Abram isn't mentioned anywhere in it. Um, he's not been kidnapped, he's not involved in the fighting. He's actually been kept safe by God separately. That's one thing to remember. God kept Abraham safe. We move on then to verses 13 to 16 and how Abraham then goes off and rescues Lot. Isn't it wonderful to see how much Abraham loved Lot? Abraham was safe and yet he gave up his safety to go and fight and rescue his nephew. Now, after Abraham gets back, he meets Melchizedek, the king of Salem. Look at verse 18 in your Bibles and look at what we're told about Melchizedek. He's not only the king of Salem, but he's also a priest of the Most High God. And in verses 19 and 20, he gives Abram a blessing. And look what he reminds Abram of in the short blessing. So the first thing is that Abram is blessed by God Most High. Abram's blessings and victory in war and safety and rescuing Lot were because of God, not because of his own strength or cleverness. In the New Testament, we are told of another king and priest who is like Melchizedek, except better. Have a read of Hebrews 7s after this if you can. So Hebrews is one of the letters at, towards the end of the Bible. This is the end, this is the start. You want to go to Hebrews chapter 7. And one of the things it says about Melchizedek right at the beginning is that it calls him the king of Salem and the priest of the Most High. So God gave us Jesus to be the king of our lives, to be the one whom we serve. He gave us Jesus to be our priest, to be the one to remind us what our relationship is to God and what God has done for us, just like what Melchizedek did for Abraham. Now we're going to think a lot more about the relationship um, that Abraham had with God and the promises and signs that God gave Abraham to remember them by um, in following Sunday schools. But just for now, let's just remember that no matter what difficulties we are facing on earth, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus because he is our saviour, he is our king and our high priest and he will save us from all the things on this earth if we would trust in him um, so we're going to sing that in one of our songs now it's one of my favorites I, I learned this one as a child and it reminds me that of all the things that Jesus is just like Melchizedek rem reminded Abraham of all the blessings that God had given him Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know us safe the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, of our grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, of our grace to trust him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self-disease. 
Well, that was just a great song all about trusting in Jesus. I really like that one. Let's pray a bit about that, shall we, as we close today's Sunday School. Pray with me. Dear Father God, thank you for giving your son Jesus Christ, the one who we can trust with all things. Thank you that you have put us in a place where we can learn about Jesus at church and at Sunday school and that we have the Bible where we can hear about all the things that have happened to your people throughout all the ages. We thank you for the autumn colours that we've uh, had in October and we pray that we'll continue to enjoy your creation throughout November as well. Oh Lord, please keep us safe as we go to school tomorrow and throughout the rest of this week. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, that's the last Sunday school of October, but we will be back in November next week. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your Sunday and a good start to the week tomorrow when you're back at school. And we will see you next week. Bye. Whoopsies. Here's your goodbye number two. I almost forgot to show you the Benedict picture, the answer from last week. It's based on Numbers chapter 13. So have a look and see if you were right in what you guessed. Here's the real goodbye. See you next week. Bye.